it has me recording. So uh, I would like to take this opportunity to welcome Steve and Jonah Jamraz from Wisconsin. Uh, we are going to be talking to them about many topics today and uh, just wanted to thank you guys for taking time to talk to me. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having us. Yeah, absolutely. So we were talking before we started, and uh, I think it's a good spot to start where our paths first crossed was at a vintage uh, five man in Wisconsin, uh, River Falls. Is it River Falls? Yeah, River Falls. Yep. Uh, we played that's <clears throat> when Jonah was playing with Midwest Alliance that uh who was on midwest alliance jonah at that point in time uh, we we had hunter osterman we had andrew curdy um clayton pino yeah and then the olsen twins brandon olsen brock olsen from superior colton hennis yeah colton hennis and then i think that was i think that might have yeah, been it. it was it okay and how how long was the team together i believe it was just one season just one okay. year one year um, and, but yeah, and before that of, we had. <clears throat> oh, go ahead. Oh, uh, before that we had like Wisconsin Infamous or not Wisconsin, uh, Wisconsin Evolution, um, yep. and that started out as like a three-man team, and then it kind of blossomed into a five-man team, and you know we kind of uh, played against like the Olsen Lake Superior. Um, I think it was just Lake Superior Legacy at the time, um, and we played against those guys at Black Star, and then <clears throat> constantly like took second to those guys. And so we thought we could, you know, come together and form like a five-man team that would be essentially like a hit squad for uh, the vintage series tournaments. Do you ever play at uh, <clears throat> any of the Black Star uh, Patriot series out in the farm and across the, the Patriot? Creek? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I went. I I played at <clears throat> Patriot a couple times by the cow. It was a cow farm or yeah. something. But it, it was good. It was good. Yeah. Very good. No, uh, we. Jonah on his YouTube channel's got a couple of videos of those series because we've I basically have captured him in events and practices since he started. But that was one that stuck in my head just because here you're going to this farm out in the middle of nowhere, going around the barn where Cross the young the calves through the river if your car can make it. And yep. those videos caught it when it was pretty high out to the field and out in the middle of nowhere. It's like build it and they will come in the middle of a <laughs> cornfield. And uh, right. that's kind of where we got to meet Superior Otter. You know Otter, uh, the, the referee from yes. Southern yes. Wisconsin? Got yep. to meet him and his uh, crew there. And uh, those were good times back in the three-man days. Is that when you started? How, how did you start playing? How did you find paintball, Jonah? <laughs> this is kind of a funny story. So it kind of like is a, um, a neat parallel to like what I do now. Um, so I'm, I'm a field major at UW Milwaukee, but um, when I was in middle school with a couple of, a couple of friends um, and Andrew Curdy as well, um, you know, I was uh, sitting at lunch with some of the, some of these friends and I was like, you know, I kind of wanted to make like a zombie movie um, kind of like around that time. And so I was like researching, I was like looking around and then all of a sudden I can't remember like exactly where, but I had the thought of like, you know, a paintball gun, you know, with like red paintballs would, would create like a, a blood effect, you know, for like those zombies. Um, and so I was like looking around and I found a paintball gun. Um, and so I like kept pestering them to get like these paintballs, you know, at the time I never even knew that these guns needed air or like CO2 to work. Um, and so I'm like looking around and then, uh, you know, over time, as time like went by, you know, like these plans kind of faded away. Um, then it was like sometime in the summer of 2012 or 20, 2012 or 2013. Um, and so I was like, you know, it, you know, these plans never, never happened. So why don't we uh, get, get this group of guys out here and try paintball for the first time. Um, and so there's this field, there was this field at least um, kind of still there. Commando. No, it's not. It was before. Oh, Nelson field. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of where that was maybe in like the green Bay area. It was around Brillian out towards the east side of east of green Bay. Yeah, but they, they had like a they had a field there and so, you know, me and some of these friends went out for the first time and uh, you know, we had we had an ex we just had a blast, you know. Um and so I I found a newfound love for it and I kinda wanted to continue it. Um some of the other guys kinda faded away, but Andrew stuck with it with me for a for a long period of time. Um then we go to Commando Paintball, which is in Green Bay and uh, that's kinda where my tournament 
I guess, three man tournament uh, experience kind of started from there. Perfect. And you started playing in the woods, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yep. It was just and Steve. Did you play at all or did you just facilitate it at that point? in time? I just, I was just a chauffeur. I played one time. Uh, I didn't like uh, what I saw in terms of getting hit. So I was like, you know what? I don't want a part of this, but I played one time, got lit up pretty good and, that's all it took, and I've been on the <laughs> sidelines recording ever since. But you have you have a deep love and respect for the game, which is obvious to anyone who knows you. I do, and, and it's it's just become more of a passion over the last eight to nine years, however long we've been in it. At first, it was chauffeuring my kid back and forth, and just wanting to be a part of his life, you know, whatever he loved than, than I loved. And uh, he certainly didn't go into football or basketball <laughs> like I did. And, uh, but it's not, it's not my nature to force my loves on him. And I've kind of absorbed what he likes to do. And uh, one of the things that I noticed Jonah um, about you is your focus. I mean, it's hard to say, oh gosh, that guy is really focused, but over the years, um, the choices that you've made uh, from bettering yourself uh, just in the short time from the vintage series, you spent time with, uh, in the vintage camp, you spent time in the Trade My Gun uh, TMG outlaw uh, mm. camp. Uh, was there anyone else before the Wisconsin infamous? Uh, no, I believe TMG. those were the only uh, organizations that I was a part of. Okay, I'd say probably the, the thing that told me he was serious uh, after he started three man with commando and going there and getting some of those teams rolling. Uh, Marcelo came to Wisconsin at Outdoor Adventures in Wyawega and had a couple of camps and was like, Dad, I want to go to that camp. Dad, I want to go to that clinic. So we spent probably two, three years going to those religiously when Marcelo and Ryan Greenspan would come up and put on their clinics so that guys could kind of learn more. And as he went through those clinics, as he got towards uh, his senior year in high school, he said, Dad, uh, I don't want to party for graduation. I want to go to the combine down in Florida. And that was the first ever combine that they had. And when, you know, we decided, sure, that's what you want to do for graduation, it kind of told us that that's where his head was at. And when we went down there, he competed against 90 of the best players at that time, they had to, to offer at that combine. And at the end of the day, got great experience from all of the pros that were there, Justin Rabikoff and Greg Sewers and Marcel and Greenspan. And uh, it was just a great experience. And at the end of the day, to be picked among the, the top five from that camp, I think gave him the confidence that he could go anywhere and play and compete with anybody. Uh, but sometimes when you don't go to a camp like that or a combine, you never know how good you are and right. you know, or what you have to work on. And I've encouraged kids that I've met in paintball at any of the national events or local events to take that up. And recently, uh, uh, Patty, Patty, I, know, I was trying to think of the last name. Uh, was one of the guys from uh, Wisconsin in the southern part of Wisconsin that went Patrick Kilnins mm. and uh, he killed it and he was widely acclaimed for his, his his abilities. So I think if kids are serious about you know wanting to take it to the next level as Jonah has, uh, you got to do the grind, but there's ways there's opportunities that NXL has put out there for you to take advantage of. Mm -hmm. that have helped to foster that growth. And when we went on a, we were, he was a junior in, in high school and we went on a soccer trip to the East coast to Virginia Falls mm -hmm. church. And uh, we met uh, at that time, uh, 
uh, we were, I was supposed to design a new paintball facility for uh, uh, one of the local fields as an architect. And so I said, let's go uh, check out a paintball field. And we went to Pev's and we had the chance to talk to Todd Peverell and hear his story uh, when he was playing pro with Strange and, and a couple other uh, seven or ten man teams and how that went about. And he said, never ever forget the opportunity to play teams that are better than you. But after you're done, thank them because they're not getting as much out of it as you are. But over right. and over and over again, he stressed, play teams that are better than you. Play teams that are better than you if you want to get better. So. I mean, that exposure that we've had nationally from Todd Peverell to the pros at the Combine to trade my gun with Jeremy and all of the things he's taught us, uh, trying out for Shock and Mikey Bruno and Johnny Iannucci and getting to rub elbows with the pros like Greenspan and Margot, uh, hearing from Aaron Tholey in the vintage camp, and then now having the great opportunity to play under Cody Mikowski and learn about his techniques. It's given him at least so many different insights and educational backgrounds in terms of how to play the game that, uh, you know, it, it's awesome. What, here's another side of things that some people don't get when you were practicing with the outlaws, how long was your commute? Um, from Appleton, I'd go and pick Joan up in Milwaukee round total about eight hours one way. And then uh, dropping him off six hour drive. We lose an hour East coast time, but uh, we did that for about a year and a half. And we got that opportunity because of, a camp that Jonah went to with John Kurzawa, who okay. became a pro player in Wisconsin, but saw Jonah's talent in one of those clinics and recommended Jeremy to take a look at him at one of the MSXL events that we had in, in Ohio. And uh, Jeremy kind of scouted him at that time. As fate would have it, his team folded after that event and was looking for a new team. And Jeremy offered him opportunities uh, on their D2 squad with a bunch of guys out of Canada. Mm -hmm. That's where we got to meet uh, Dave Chong, Mr. Bounce, Dr. Mm -hmm. Bounce, and uh, a lot of the guys from Canada, whether it's uh, Ben Challenger with that program mm -hmm. back then, who's now doing great things with and, Diesel. Uh, with Diesel. And uh, it's just crazy when you start getting around to all these national events and getting to meet people. We also got to meet... Dirty Joe and many of the guys that Jonah played with are pro now on the Outlaws. Uh, just super teammates, guys that you'd just die for, you know, on the field. It it's it's certainly a brotherhood when it comes to players, whether it's new school, old school. Guys know what it takes to sacrifice. I mean, you know, in the nineties, I was driving seven hours one way to practice in Illinois. Um, and right now I'm driving the same ish to For coach Blast the guys. Blast yep. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. It's what I found. And I go back to my days in basketball and football and I tell the kids in this sport all the time, you know, back in the day, you know, if you were on a, a team, a, a championship team, we were uh, state champs in football two out of the three years. We made it third year, third year we were second. And uh, I played against Paul Christ, who's the coach of the Badgers right now uh, mm -hmm. at Camp at Camp Randall. But the camaraderie that we had in our sports doesn't match up at all to the camaraderie and sportsmanship I see in this sport of paintball. And that's what's made it so cool for me is that as a dad, you just want the best for your kids. And if your kid wants to do something, a lot of parents think of paintball as, you know, uh, that's not going to lead to anything. I had parents tell me with their kids on the field, this is never going to amount to anything. I don't know what he's doing with this sport, but I look at it some almost 10 years later and I look back at all the connections my son has got with the sport. I see Last year, he went to Prague with the NXL Media and filmed overseas with them. 
when he went to yep. the NXL Combine, he got to be, we got to be good friends with Matt Angles because Matt has, shares the same passion, mm -hmm. uh, passion as Jonah with film. Found out he's a, a Packer fan from Wisconsin, born and raised, lives down in Texas. And you start weaving all these connections in before you know it. You've got friends all across the world. And for him, being in video and film, it's just a natural fit in this sport. Uh, what great, uh, a great sport to have people play together and get them off the street or, or doing things that, you know, aren't very productive. These kids get together and it's like uh, they're in a whole different world. And guys that have retired will quit. They just keep coming back. So it tells you what a, what a, a bond they have with the sport, with the people in the sport. And the positive things that have come out of the sport. I, I can't, uh, you know, thank the process and the sport enough for what's given back to me and, and my son. I, I would agree. It's one of the things very special about the sport that's kept me so involved with it for years and years is I love helping out players. I love trying to affect uh, people's lives in a positive way through paintball. Um, I'm still friends and talk with players that I started out with in the eighties. And, you know, I'm still friends with some of them. I've, I've lost some friendships and I've hurt some friendships along the way. Um, I think that's life and that's how it is. Mm -hmm. But uh, paintball is definitely a brotherhood that, it, it's a warm blanket, but it also pun can punch you in the gut from time to time. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. <clears throat> I think when I look back on those trips that we took to Indiana and in all the national events that you fly to, and when you don't win, and sometimes you don't even make it into Sunday, you just think, is it ever going to materialize for us? Are we ever going to reach the podium? And that's why when you do get to the top or uh, place or you're not only happy that it happened to you, but you're happy to see it happen for others that you've taken the grind with, you know, and what's, what's cool about this is, you know, last year I watched struggle get to the championship in Vegas and win it all guys that we had, you know, practiced against in the outlaw camp, uh, Tommy and Joe Bondo and all mm -hmm. those guys from struggle we practice against those guys all the time and to see them have success and make it to the top. You know, I was so thrilled for those guys. And then to see Virgil and Jackson and the group from blast camp last year, you know, guys we had competed against and practiced with, I was happy as hell for those guys. And for us to get it last year at the end of the year, knowing that when we went to Vegas last year and played with infamous, we, we got four owed four owed, uh, we won one one match mm -hmm. out of all four, and then the team disbanded. Jonah went to Vintage, played with Tholey and those guys, and uh, after that camp disbanded, we got together and got back. Cody brought us back uh, on Infamous and won World Cup last year. So you just go through this cycle, and you think you're never going to win, but I think if you keep grinding and, and listen to what, you know, the words of experience around you, and you certainly represent <clears throat> words of experience that I think sometimes go in some guy's ears and out the other. But I think if any of that can, even a little bit of it can stick in between the ears, you can see the success that you can have. And when you get that success or a taste of that success, Cody always told us, Mikowski said, I want to build a program where you guys are winning I don't care if it's at D3, D4, D5, D2, whatever it is, just get used to winning and winning's contagious. And once you feel that, that sense of victory, it's a whole different feeling and it gives you the confidence that you need. When Kersey had us in clinic, he always told us, when you get to that start box, tell yourself you're good paintball players, mm -hmm. you're good effing players. And say right. that over and over again, get that confidence because, you know, the, the skills, the fundamentals are all important, but confidence is important as well. Hugely, hugely. We, uh, that hits home for me exponentially. 
the confidence thing. I agree wholeheartedly. Mm-hmm. I think there's a couple of things that really go into um, becoming like a, a successful foundation or a successful like program. Um, I think it's um, Todd Peverell, like when we were in um, Virginia, uh, also said, you know, something that was very, very important as well. Um, you know, playing with the same group of guys or, or finding a way to stick with the same group of guys for a longer period of time will allow like your chemistry to, to you know, <clears throat> up tenfold. Um but playing together with these group of people for longer periods of time has shown success. And I feel like that's something that, you know, isn't seen in paintball too much besides like in the higher divisions, like, you know, pro. Um, and even, you know, it's important to have a group of guys that you're with for a longer period of time. Like what did, what did Todd, Todd say? He just said, you know, when we met with him, we told him we were on a team that had been together for two years and his eyes just kind of got wide and said, you're lucky because, Usually once a team has success, guys just, you know, go to the next best offer and they're gone and they don't stick around. And and for that matter, you even see that happen in mid-season. Guys are breaking right. up. So that's true. Long, longevity is, is certainly not something that this sport, uh, at least on teams and rosters, is, is, is known for. What, uh, Jonah, this one's for you, uh, through your t- talk to me, tell me about your combine experience since you were at the first combine. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell me about that. Walk me through the entire process. Okay. Um, so it was kind of interesting. So we start off, um, you know, I think, I believe it was a Friday through Saturday experience. Then we flew back Sunday. I don't think uh, the event actually happened on Sunday. Um, but like you fly in, um, and then you're there on Friday and you're, uh, you start out, you know, with a conditioning lap that I, I'm pretty sure they do like through these new events as well. Um, you go through that and then you go through like the whole day is all drills and, and going through different, uh, different courses or different, um, you know, things they have set in place, uh, whether it's snap shooting, you know, running, and then, you know, shooting a little bit more, but then like by the end of the day, you get into a little bit more situationals, they cut the field in half. Um, they do like race of the 50 on the Dorito side, race of the 50 on the snake side, um, and just kind of those things. And, um, and so, you know, all throughout this, this time period, you know, they have the coaches out there with, you know, their, uh, their score sheet kind of keeping track of each individual in, individual player um, and kind of, you know, progressively ranking them and, you know, dividing them up based on, you know, how they do throughout these courses. Um, and by the end of that day, they uh, um, choose, you know, like their top, five you know then they go through like their other divisional teams um and once that day is finished you know then they uh you know assign you teams and you figure that out and at the end of the day we got a chance to kind of like run a couple of points with the teams that we you know got paired up with and uh and even some like with the we even got like a couple of rips in against the pros um but then the next day you know you it would be like a tournament style setting um and i believe we had a couple of a couple of matches against the other um you know, placed teams. And then we had a couple of matches against the pros, um, which I think is, is pretty, pretty cool to have, you know, kind of that team experience against like a, a pro team, like where else are you going to get the, those kind of rips in against like a pro a professional team? Um, so right. that was a really cool eye opening experience. And I think, you know, being able to have those kind of experiences will allow you to kind of broaden your, your eyes on, you know, what it's like to play against those divisions or how, you know, how these players play on the field, you know, I think it gives you some different looks, and I think you know that that uh, information, that experience is pretty pretty uh, insane to have. One of the cool things is that uh, one of the uh, one of his teammates for the Outlaws was picked as the top five with Jonah Dave Haber, uh, but at that time, right before we were going to play uh, our event or our match on Sunday, I think he ended up playing with the NRG guys that he was with at that time. Uh, mm-hmm. But there's a few guys that are. Uh, Austin Kaus was one. Yeah, that they're still playing. I don't know uh, if he plays. But uh, so that was one. And then uh, touching or at least swinging the other way, you're also, I saw you filming uh, one of the ICPL events in Florida. Florida. Did you do Chicago Mm -hmm. as well? Yeah, I believe so. Okay, Chicago. Yep, Chicago. Yep, you're right. Chicago and Florida was was that your first experience with the ten man format? 
Yeah, with 10-man format, it was. Um, now, playing on Hyperball was a little bit different. Um, obviously, uh, ICPL has Woods, Hyperball, and like and a couple of other mixed courses. Um, but, yeah, no, that was my first experience really, uh, you know, seeing what 10-man's all about and kind of like the different dynamic that it has. Um, and kind of like the, the play style, you know, how fast or slow it is compared to, you know, typical, you know, tournament style five-man uh, that we have yep. right now. What what were your impressions? What did you like? What didn't you like? There is no right or wrong answer. Mm -hmm. I just from a from a perspective of youth, because a, a bunch of times what I deal with is uh, people who don't know. Uh, they don't mm -hmm. know that the a lot of the current pro NXL players are jumping on and playing with old teammates in the ICPL. Now, 10 man's a completely different game, bigger fields. It's supposed to be smaller. It's supposed to allow the older guys, uh, you know, to be able to play and be competitive. Um, but you still get intense paintball. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. No, I feel like there's a, you know, with the 10 man style format, you're playing against, you know, 10 different guys. I feel like the uh, field awareness is slightly different, you know, in that scenario, um, considering, you know, you have all these individual battles going on um, and you kind of have to have that awareness to kind of put, put the pieces together and figure out, you know, how, how do we push up this field, you know, communicating with the back players, considering there's, you know, 10 players on the field. Right. And I feel like that dynamic is, uh, is pretty interesting pretty interesting because you know if you know one guy dies you can kind of fill it over and um i don't know i just feel like it's a different dynamic that you know more players should experience is it something that you'd be interested in playing i mean infamous does have mm -hmm. a team but they have a pro franchise i only assume that if there's enough interest they're going to do an am team as well but mm -hmm. are you have interest in in 10 man or is it just not your bag Oh, absolutely. I mean, when I'm on the uh, side of the sidelines, you know, kind of broadcasting, watching, uh, you know, these right. players play on the hyperball field. Um, and then sometimes I get to, you know, every in between, like, you know, we have these break periods. Sometimes I'll go over and check out the uh, woods ball field and kind of see how that goes down. Um, but, you know, watching these, uh, these players and some of those, you know, they'll have like divisional 10 uh, man teams at ICPL as well. I mean, I'll get to see some of my friends, you know, that, that I usually see at national events, you know, playing these, uh, playing on the hyperball field. And then, you know, it brings me back, you know, I'm, I'm recording these guys from the sidelines and I'm like, man, I wish I could make this move here. I wish I could have, uh, you know, I just yeah. I wish I could hop in and, and play with these guys. But, you know, that would definitely be an experience that I would be open to uh, having in the future. Uh, getting back to Steve now on this one, you've always been completely active, at least from the times that I've seen you uh, at regional and national events uh do you make it a point to pretty much go to everything that you possibly can with jonah whether it's a tournament or a practice i do uh, uh, i've filmed probably every practice he's ever been at almost everyone uh, and if i'm there i might as well help so whether it's blowing up bunkers or helping guys and um there's certainly a lot more I, could. I saw you do that and that <laughs> just volumes to your character and i know that i said it but it's absolutely true in all my years i've seen a handful of guys care that much to do it because i know you weren't getting paid to do it but you just your love shows through and there needs to be more people like both of you in the game um because it, it just makes it so much better uh for guys like me to you know try to pass on wisdom to people who are hungry, who want to know, who want to learn, who want to do it the right way, who have the heart, who have the desire. It's very, very rare to find people like you. And that's, you know, the reason why you're one of the first uh, people for me to do on this podcast, because I mean, it sets the tone. This is, this is, the kind of people that I want to talk to and uh, highlight in the game. Well, I should, I certainly appreciate that. I think uh, as I, you know, reflect on those comments, I remember the first time that I was introduced to you, uh, my son 
back in the day, probably six years ago, I said, Dad, you know, it's spring break. I want to go up to Superior. That's like five hours from here. And he had never been up there. And uh, I know Jeff Olson, you know, the Olson brothers, uh, dad, coach up there. And I said, uh, Jeff, do you know anything about this Brad Gerd guy? He's volunteered to drive all the way from Minneapolis to come to Appleton, Wisconsin, to pick my son up and take him five hours up to Superior and then drive him back. And uh, I'm just like, who does that? I mean, so do you know anything about this guy? Some creeper in a van. <laughs> yeah, and, and, uh, and he's like, he's a great guy. He loves what he, he just loves the sport of paintball. And that's, that was my first exposure to you. So when you talk about someone that's selfless and dedicated to doing good things for the sport, you just look in the mirror and you see everything you need to know. But maybe that's some of those Midwest values. I don't know. I just told my kids, you treat everybody the way you want to be treated. And at the end of the day, if you live your life that way, good things will happen to you. So it's true. It's a, it's a great lesson. And I appreciate the kind words. I do it because I was one of those kids who didn't have a ride, um, you know, just wanted so badly to be at the paintball field every weekend, every Saturday, every Sunday. So worked at a paintball field, did whatever I could to be out there. So and when I find stories, those are the stories yeah. that I hear all the time. You know, Dustin Richards tells me about all the times when he took, you know, Chris Jansen, owner of Boom, or picked up uh, Max Gerhard and, and took those guys out to the field or spent time, you know, and he's playing with Jonah now and his lineage goes way back and, you know, pass it on, pay it forward, whatever you want to call it, help everybody grow the sport in some way, fashion. Uh, as po as much as possible, and again, we, we hear about this sport not getting uh, enough publicity, uh, and when it does get publicity, sometimes it's all bad, like the fight in with the spectators at the last NXL event, you know, that seems to get so much attention, but how about some of the backstories behind what happened at NXL Vegas, like Iron Man out of nowhere, you know, taking the championship with uh, Norcross and uh, Parish and LJ, you know, some of our Midwest guys coming out of nowhere to beat, you know, just everybody. No, but who saw that coming, you know? Right. right. Why isn't that, why isn't that getting more airtime than some of the other, you know, things that happen? So. Right. Some people just like to see the world burn and it doesn't matter if you're successful, you're going to have detractors. It's just inevitable. The sport is what the sport is. It's, you know, you got to take the good with the bad and you just keep going. That's yeah. kind of, you know, a, a rule that I think I would teach my daughter when she's ready. You know, it doesn't matter what other people think about what you're doing. If you're doing what you think is right, it's lead by example. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would I would tend to agree. Now, J Jonah, you uh, the last you guys won World Cup last year, correct? Was correct. that your first national win? Yeah, that was my first national win. Uh, walk me through that Sunday. Who did you play? How did you get there? And tell me about the team because I think I know the players, but I'm not sure about all the players. Okay. Um, yeah. So kind of like uh, I'll kind of set the story from uh, the Saturday. Um, so our prelims, you know, we went, uh, uh, we had one, one win, um, two ties and a loss. So kind of a pretty, pretty bad margin. Uh, I think it was like a 0.25 or something like that. Um, and we just barely skated in as the 16th seed, um, you know, so obviously we'd be playing the number one seed. And so coming in. And um, by the way, we wouldn't have got in had blast camp not beat a team in Annapolis, Maryland uh, to get in there. Blast Camp wins. They come back from 3-0 deficit or 3-1. They win. We move on. And had they not won. So thanks, Virgil. Thanks, uh, <laughs> thanks Happy. Happy, for the coaching and for the guys at Blast Camp for winning. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, so that was, a, that was a pretty big help. I just remember uh, 
me and some of the European guys, because we uh, we had a couple of European players from uh, Man- Manchester Firm, um, Gabe Parker and uh, Andrew and, or Adam. Um, but we had those two guys, uh, very 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 fun guys to be around. Um, but we were just sitting on the sideline watching that uh, that Blast Camp game, you know, holding holding on uh, to the hope that we had, and uh, you know, Blast Camp took that win, and so uh, it pushed us in as a 16th seed, and we were able to come out, but. Um, so that night, you know, the seedings came out. We saw that we were playing, uh, you know, Grit, who has been like number one or two or top top contenders for the season uh, title. Um, you know, we've seen them out there before. And so we were like, you know, we, we just barely made it in. You know, we didn't expect, you know, to make it in. So why not come out with a, with a bang, see if we can uh, make this win come out. Um, and so, you know, we come in. It's, it's uh, like 7 a.m., 8 a.m., um, early in the morning, you know, first match of the day. Um, so we come out and I think we throw like some, uh, some fast plays in there. We, we try to catch them off guard. And so we get that first, uh, that first point out there. Um, they come by, you know, get a major. Um, so they already, uh, they lost that point, the swing point, And then, um, they, uh, started a body down. Um, so we capitalized on that next one and they got another major. And so we were able to keep capitalizing on that until we were, um, up three zero. And then, uh, they started to come back a little bit and, uh, the final score of that game was three to two. And so we, uh, Having that first win against Grit was was pretty huge in our uh, confidence boost throughout the rest of the rest of the day, rest of the event. Um, because at first, you know, we didn't think that you know we you know no, we're gonna win. That, yeah, nothing to lose. Right. You know, the thing think we were gonna win that game. Yep. Um, and so after that, we were like, you know, we we made it this far. You know, why not just just keep going and see see how that goes? And so our next match was against uh, CEP. Um, you know, and we had played against, yeah, we played when I was, uh, on vintage with, you know, Hank and Mike and some of those guys, um, you know, we played, uh, played against them in Texas. Um, and we lost to those guys pretty bad. So coming out to this game, you know, we just beat, just beat grit. So we were like, you know, why not just try this out? Um, so we, we finally found our groove that we didn't, didn't have in, uh, Friday or Saturday's prelims. Um, we found this groove and we were able to, to ride it out the, the rest of the tournament. <clears throat> and we were able to uh, come out with a win against those guys. I think it was what six to two, six to two. Um, yeah, so, uh, the Padres was another one. Uh, we played the Padres uh, when when we were on Vintage, and we beat those beat those guys in Texas as well. Okay. Um, just great guys to be around, old ex Vintage guys from the from the past. Um, and so Hank and Mike had a little bit of uh, animosity with those guys, so they uh, kind of had some fun. Animals. Yeah, so so they kind of had some fun out there, um, and so we beat beat CEP, and so we're already you know two wins in on Sunday, and we're like, wow, we're almost there. You know, we just have to win this uh, Padres game, and and now we're in the finals. So we beat Padres. You know, we come out, and now we're on the final stage. You know, something that we had no expectation of being in, um, and so it's just kind of a whole new experience stepping on that pro field and understanding, you know, hey, we made it this far, you know, we're confident in, in our abilities to play on this field, this layout. And, uh, you know, I feel like stepping onto that field for the first time, we we kind of knew that we had this in the bag. So we had to, uh, you know, we hit them hard. And I feel like it really showed on the on the Go Sports footage that, you know, we came out, came out pretty strong and stuck to our game plan. And for you, usually you're photographing on the pro field. Mm-hmm. Now you're playing with it. Right, right. That, that moment – um, of stepping on the field was probably <clears throat> eclipsed by finally winning um, mm-hmm. the event. Uh, one of the other podcasts that we that I had, uh, I was talking to Jeremy Salm about that, and he said that that feeling, that win, um, you can't put a price on it. Mm-hmm. And it's something that is addictive and drives either some people to great things or to complete madness. Yeah, I was talking with uh, Fred Berkeley uh, in Vegas this year and you know, seeing how he was doing and, and having him tell his story. You know, he congratulated us on winning World Cup, but then he said, you know, I asked him about his experience and he said, First thing out of his mouth, they'll never take it away from you. Mm-hmm. They'll never take it away from you. You yep. got it for the rest of your life. And, uh, you know, he talked about winning World Cup, not just once, but twice. And, you know, getting that pro spot and what a legacy he's built, you know, with Jeremy and those guys in a, at the outlaw camp claiming their pro spot. I mean, 
you know, what could be better than actually winning World Cup on top of that, claiming a pro spot for yourself. You look at, you know, the likes of Elevation and Aftermath and those guys that have won their spots. You know, what a great thing to take. If, mm. for, if for nothing else, you take that away at the end of your day and say, you know, you know, I made my own pro spot. How cool is that? It's special. It's special. Um, that I know. It is. It really is. The uh, the other thing, tell me who was on that winning team, Jonah. And um, Brawl was the team you guys uh, won. played against. Played um, against Brawl. Yeah, I think, uh, was it 6-1? or Yeah, it was 6-1 uh, on that one. Um, but off the top, top of my head, you know, we had Alex DeQuisto, um <coughs> D4. Yeah, D4, Wisconsin native. Um, you know, he, him, Reed, and um, – Reed no, not Reed, Reed, Portrait, uh, Reed, uh, Reed Seegers. Seegers. Um, they, you know, they they had been training with Cody uh, long before. Like Wisconsin Infamous was a was a team, so they kind of had um, some prior coaching with Cody. Um, but so we had Alex Sequisto, you know, me, Adam, Adam Jeffrey, who was uh, the uh, uh, Montreal Im- or, from England. Uh, yeah, from the England from Europe, um, and then Gabe Gabe Parker was another one. Um, you know, Reed Seegers. Um, Tyler Smith was another one. He he played for um, uh, Whiteout and was from the Appleton area, kind of closer to me. Yep. Um, you know, we have Hank Gunther Stump. Um, he played with Vintage, uh, and then same goes for uh, Mike Ulrich, who also played for Vintage as well. But that that was kind of uh, our roster, and then we had you know Cody Mikowski as our coach. And how do you feel the uh, jump was? Because you, I mean. St- Tons of teams made the jump from mm. E2 to semi-pro. Uh, mm. Tell me what your difference was in your experience of semi-pro. Take. Mm. From uh, from this season, well, from last season to this season, or from yeah. when I was on the Outlaws to, uh, yep. to semi-pro? From last, season, from last season to this season. Okay. Um, so for, for uh, the move from, from last season to this season – um, you know, semi pro, well, D2 to semi pro is a pretty big jump. Um, and I kind of knew that going into it. Um, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of the technical skills between players is going to be relatively the same, but I feel like the biggest difference is, uh, you know, either the A, the off the break shooting, or it's uh, the mid game moves. And I feel like that's kind of what separates, you know, the difference between D2 and semi pro. And then that's a much more uh, exaggerated difference between semi pro and pro as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but I felt like, you know, one thing that we just couldn't get with this layout was, you know, we couldn't have, have a strong snake presence. I mean, I feel like that was something that we needed to have, you know, on this particular layout. Um, and I feel like that's kind of one of the things that killed us, you know, at this event, you know, coming in, you know, from first place seed in D2 to almost, you know, dead last in a, uh, for Vegas, um, you know, as an eye opening experience, you know, for the guys. And I think, uh, you know, it solidified our ideas that, you know, we have to put in the work, you know, you have to work harder, you know, you can't just think that this is given to you because it's not. Um, But I feel like, you know, some players were able to figure out, you know, hey, you know, it's not not a whole lot different than D2 besides like those mid game moves and, you know, understanding that. And I think, uh, you know, moving forward, um, there's going to be a stronger emphasis on, you know, our off off the break shooting, you know, and working out how we, how do we survive like these, uh, you know, like l- low body situations or how do we capitalize on, you know, if we get a G off the breaker, if we, you know, we're on a four on three or, you know, a, um, you know, a five on three or something along those sorts, um, you know, how do we capitalize on those situations so that we don't, you know, throw those bodies away or how can we, you know, finish this game, came out strong. I feel like those are some things that we're going to be working on, you know, if we can get this uh, Richmond event, um, you know, in the works, otherwise, you know, Chicago or World Cup, of course. Um, but those are kind of the things that we noticed, um, you know, when we made that jump. Um, but it's a, it wasn't a whole lot different for me, at least, um, you know, when I made the jump from uh, the Outlaws D2 to Semi-Pro. Um, I feel like that was a bigger, you know, eye-opening experience, you know, from, like, my perspective. Right. It makes, it makes sense. It makes sense. And, Steve, you're, again. Uh, sorry, oh. I, I can't hear you. Oh, no. Can you hear me now? It's like maybe this died. Can you hear me, Steve? It's like no problem. We could have. 
the volume. Wait a sec. All right, can you try talking quick? I can definitely talk to you. Can you hear me? That's not working. Your battery could be out. Okay, try now. Hello? Hello? Check. check. Test. What is going on? I don't know what's going on. That's okay. I completely lost that. And for some reason, this won't work. Either. make it a part we can make it a part series <laughs> okay is that working for you yeah uh He's texting that just totally. yep okay i think Got it's it. working now is it yeah, okay yeah. i don't know what happened there but yeah, no, problem. There. no right. problem that's hey it's 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 technology we're, we're, <laughs> I'm sitting here all day. <laughs> I'm sitting here all Sweet. day. All right, so, perfect. So we were talking about the move from D2 to semi-pro. I was mm -hmm. talking to your dad uh, where I watch, I pay attention um, often to too many things at an event, but I just like, uh, I like the input and the influence that Steve has with the team. Um, and the guys are super uh, responsive to Steve. Uh, how do you how do you reconcile being a father uh, and watching your son? I mean, I mean, does it does it matter to you if he gets sat? Does it matter to you if he gets chewed on by the coach? I mean, you don't seem to be a sheltering kind of father, but uh, you know, explain a little bit of that to us. I think probably my <clears throat> my own experience playing sports is has kind of helped in that regard because you know I got yelled at yelled at my fair share and uh, you know seeing Jonah in soccer you know I can't remember how many different events that I went to where you know he wasn't on the field in soccer and as a as a kid who worked his ass off to get to the varsity level as a senior in a school of about 1500 kids only to be told that he didn't make the cut on cut day as a senior, you know, for the varsity team, I think has, has kind of driven him. But the flip side of that is I've seen my kids sit long enough to know that if he's sitting in a, in a national event on a team of eight kids or five are out on the field at any one time, it's probably a good thing because, uh, you know, you can always learn. And I've told them that you can always learn by watching. If you're not out there, support your team in any way you possibly can, whether it's cleaning them off, running pots, whatever it is. And I think yeah, I don't have to repeat that to him. I think he knows. And at the end of the day, when everybody's paying upwards of $1,000 for every national event, you want to win and you want to win at all costs. And if it means my son sits and someone else is in there that's getting the job done, then so be it. Because, you know, at the end of the day, everybody is there because they're good or they have a reason to be there. And <coughs> if you're worried about your kid getting yelled at, then you're not going to be part of the outlaws program. And we were there for a year and a half. Jeremy tells it like it is. He's not holding back any punches, whether, I'm there in the pits with my son. If he's not doing well, he'll chew his ass out every day and twice on Sunday. So it's just the way it is. If you're in sports and you're a parent in sports, if you don't like your kid being yelled at, then probably won't be in sports all that long. Makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. Jonah, uh, one thing that's always important to me is – giving respect to the people who helped us get to where we are. Uh, are there people that you'd like to thank that uh, you might not have thanked before 
to that helped you get to where you are now? Mm -hmm. Um, well, there's, there's quite a few people, you know, who have taken the opportunity to, you know, take a chance on me. And I want to thank, you know, uh, Jeremy thought Jeremy Salm was a very big one, um, you know, getting me onto the program. Well, um, getting through, uh, John Kurzawa, John Kurzawa was a big, uh, trainer and, and, you know, activist in, you know, my paintball career. Um, and, you know, Cody Mikowski is another big one, you know, Aaron Tholey taking the, taking the time to, uh, help me out, you know, on the vintage team. Um, you know, those clinics with Marcelo Margot, Ryan Greenspan, um, you know, I've got to, got to talk to uh, Marcelo quite a bit over the last couple of years and, um, you know, him training me at these clinics and helping out was another big one. You know, uh, Chris Jansen was a, was another helpful, uh, um, player in this. Um, you know, when I was at commando, uh, there was a, a boom clinic, you know, right before like they, they went pro when they were playing like semi-pro in D2. Um, you know, they held a clinic at commando and that was a, that was a very big, um, opportunity to kind of like learn from higher divisional players at a, at a young age when I was still playing rec ball. Um, and I, and I'm sure there's, there's a couple out there that I'm, that I'm really skipping out on right now, but. No, I understand. We're not going to hold you to it and say that mm -hmm. that's all the people that it is, but For sure. I, I completely understand. And then, uh, why don't you tell me about uh, the Wisconsin infamous program, how many teams you have, because it's amazing, uh, mm -hmm. and you can shout out any of the sponsors that you wish to. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, no, we have a Division Four. We have a Division Three uh, program now. Um, then our line, you know, as uh, semi-pro. Um, but, you know, as sponsor-wise, you know, we have uh, – um, Travis Lemansky started his own, you know, paintball brand called Pro DNA, um, and you know he's got a couple of uh, um, big names out there backing him right now. Um, but I would like to thank. Uh, I'm just trying to make sure I have all these. You know, I don't want to leave any of them out. No, I am. Um, but uh, but no, we have Virtue, Planet Eclipse. Um, and then we have uh, Pro Shar is another big one. You know, making sure that you know our paint's shooting good. Um, in our soon to be sponsor, Mott's applesauce. Mott's applesauce. Get right with Mott's. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We'll see where that all show where that all goes. Virgil well, loves loves that whole side. <laughs> we're uh we're seeing what we can do with that. Uh Hank's been a big applesauce uh advocate and uh we're seeing uh what we can do with a sponsorship with Mott's. But uh two Fantastic. two names uh, that I thought of uh, while Jonah's looking through sponsors that uh, I remember helped us out along the journey. Just guys that you don't even think of, a guy named Sean Fletcher, who was with uh, a player with Chaotic. I remember Jonah's very first tournament, three-man tournament up at Commando. Uh, his gun went down. Uh, what was the gun that you had? Uh, it was either an Invert Mini or an Infamous yeah, Empire Axe. It was, it was an Invert Mini, I think, and he had some line issues with that, some air leaking. And Sean, out of the goodness of his heart, didn't know us from Adam picked up his gun, fixed it so he could compete. Had the gun been down, we wouldn't have even been able to compete in that event. So it's something I've never forgot as a parent. Uh, what do you do? You know, I don't, I certainly couldn't help him. And uh, another kid, Jamie Conrad, was a ref at Commando, and he was always encouraging Jonah and, and his friends to, and giving them tips on how to play, you know, back and forth. And it's guys that, that those two guys aren't in the sport right now because they've sacrificed for their family uh, to do things for them in lieu of themselves. But uh, just the unselfish nature of, of guys like them that have made the sport what it is today. And again, we just try to give back as much as we can uh, based on the experiences we've had. And that way everybody benefits. I mean, if, if people gave back the way that you did, this would be a completely different landscape. And I'm just, again, trying to say that good guys can win and succeed and flourish. Um, Absolutely. In this insanely wonderful sport. Um, is there anyone else that you have to or need to thank there Jonah. yeah absolutely uh the siege paintball for hosting us and allowing us to practice there you know um we've been able you know before the practice before chicago we're able to get a couple pro teams out you know last year we had aftermath we had 
um, you know, infamous and some of the other, some of the other teams out there and able to uh, grind against those top level teams was gave us some really good looks. Um, but otherwise, you know, pro shower playing clips, push paintball, uh, Bunker Kings, Nike is a big one for the pro squad as well. Um, and then just FNDN um, and pro DNA, you know, created by uh, Travis Lemansky. They're doing some really cool stuff out there, you know, creating some new uh, uh, barrels with some, some crazy technology that's helping with, you know, water getting into porting and, just making some really cool advancements. And uh, if you haven't already, definitely check that out on the infamous, you know, Facebook page, uh, Instagram page and their website, but they've got some really cool stuff coming out. And do you have a web page for your photography? Because I know that you're also a photographer and videographer mm-hmm. and quite talented, amazingly talented, but I know that it pulls you between playing and filming but is there a website where people can see your work? Yeah, absolutely. No, I appreciate that so much. Um, no, I've got an Instagram page, you know, you can follow me at Jonah Jamros DP. And then on, on top of that, you know, my, my actual website is uh, just Jonah Um, I've got a lot of my uh, portraiture work on there, you know, my video work for different clients. And, uh, um, you know, if you're ever interested in checking that stuff out, it's definitely a cool experience. Just check it out. And don't forget, the YouTube channel, Jonah Jamro's YouTube, where you can actually relive the whole process from start to finish. Uh, there's a documentary series called the Momentum Series that captured the days of three man in there where we basically recorded all the games and footage uh, behind the scenes. And uh, many of the practices from those days is on Jonah Jamro's YouTube channel as well. That's fantastic. That's, I was going to ask that when you guys started talking about it. Um, but yeah, it, there's, there's information. It's completely different than when I was a kid. There's information on getting better, how to get to the field. Um, it, it's all out there. If you look for it and know where to look and when to look. And uh, it's, it's amazing that you put it all out there for, people to consume and benefit from it. Absolutely. No, I found, uh, um, you know, with my, when I've had the, the amazing experience of having my dad come to all these practices and these games and be able to film me uh, during that time period. Um, and I think, you know, reviewing tape and watching footage of, you know, other players, you know, whether that's, you know, pro D2 or, or just higher level paintball, I think is, uh, in, is invaluable to any generation that's coming up in this industry and quite frankly, any other sport. I mean, you see NFL teams, you know, you see uh, MLS uh, soccer teams, you know, reviewing tape and watching footage, you know, um, whether it's at the pro level trying to figure out tendencies or, you know, in the divisional levels trying to work on, you know, your technical skills, your field awareness and those kind of things. Um, I really do think uh, watching as much as you can, um, like whether it's raw footage, you know, tournament style gameplay, um, really getting that experience to take the time to watch these players. How do they move in these different situations? You know, how are they, what's their form like in these bunkers? And I feel like um, form and technical as well as, you know, the uh, field awareness are huge things that people, um, you know, coming up in this uh, sport in the divisionals um, need to, to watch and check out um, if they want to start playing at uh, higher levels. Um, that's something that I've noticed, um, you know, just as my, as my growth. Yeah being able to reflect on, you know, how I played or how, you know, like how I played this scenario or, you know, could my form have been better? So I wouldn't have been shot doing this, you know, uh, those are things that I look at, you know, when I review uh, the tape. Right. Tape doesn't lie. <laughs> it's <brutal>. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Well, uh, I just wanted again to thank you guys for taking the time to sit and talk with me. Um, I will definitely get have a first front row seat in watching you guys compete in the semi pro division, uh, so that it's it's a an added benefit for me to be able to share that experience with you guys, uh, even if it's on different squads. But it's still special for me to you know, see guys that I care about succeeding and working together. Uh, I know that we're going to uh, scrimmage each other throughout the season. And, you know, from my standpoint and the blast camp family, you know, we want to have a great relationship and build. And it's, you know, I I don't care if you're in the finals with us. uh, That's going to be a great day. Of course I want to win, (laughs) <laughs> but, 
you guys want to win too. And it's just, you know, it's special. It's bound to happen. Um, and I just, I look forward to that day that we can share it another uh, story and another special moment together, because I appreciate both of you. And I thank you for everything that you've done to help me uh, further along in my career and allowing me to have some kind of influence uh, to you guys. It's, it means a lot to me. Yeah, absolutely. And thanks for what you bring to the, to the sport as well. Obviously with your background, your history, you've got a lot to share with this younger generation if, if they'll listen. And uh, that's always, you know, the, the challenge, even being a parent, sometimes, you know, the younger generation doesn't listen to what you're saying. And, uh, you know, sometimes they got to learn the hard way. Sometimes. But, uh, <laughs> but it's all part of life, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Sure. Well, yeah. I want to thank you again for taking this time out. I want to also say that, you know, in a couple weeks or when the event starts going, um, when the NXL starts up again, I'd love to revisit and touch base and, you know, how this progresses. I don't know how this is going to mm. progress. I'm doing it because I love talking to guys like you. I love paintball. This scene <coughs> is unfortunate, but it's not going to define paintball it's just inhibiting us for right now and i think that uh, when we come out the other end we're all going to be a little bit more appreciative to what we have and to each other so again i yes, appreciate you and i appreciate your time absolutely sounds no. good brad uh, thanks, thanks again for reaching out yeah thanks again for the opportunity and having us on this uh, on this platform Yes, I, I, again, I can't say enough great things about you guys. So uh, with that, I will let you go, and you guys have a wonderful evening. Sounds, Sounds good. good. You too. Take care. Thank you, guys. Peace. Well, that's my second uh, podcast of the day, talking with Steve and Jonah Jamraz. Jonah is one of the photographers for the NXL uh, he also plays for Wisconsin Infamous in their semi-pro line. Uh, I just wanted to thank uh, Jonah, Steve, uh, and everyone else. Thank you for watching up to this point, and I hope that you uh, enjoyed the uh, podcast that we have. So thank you very much. Have a wonderful day.